This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had an eye win against Odds Bowl, and in the end, it was Liliana's contract for Modern that came out on top. So today, we are heading to Modern to see if we can get for demons, quote-unquote, on the battlefield and win the game with Liliana's contract and uh, this should be an interesting one. So, a quick reminder before we break down Liliana's contract for modern. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Against Odds in general, it would be so sweet of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So, let's talk Liliana's contract, starting with our namesake card. So, Liliana's contract... When it comes into play, we get to draw four cards and we lose four life. So a big source of card advantage for five mana. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control four or more demons with different names, we win the game. So before talking about how we are trying to win with Liliana's Contract, uh, I want to mention the ways I tried and failed to win with Liliana's Contract. I actually built one, two, three, four and a half-ish different decks to try to make this work before finally getting to where we ended up. So heading into the build. I really wanted to try to not cheat and actually make Liliana's contract work with actual demons, like literal demons. So take one was Rakdos demons. So you get like red demons, like Rakdos Showstopper. The problem is demons are ridiculously expensive. And basically what happened is uh, you never win with Liliana's contract. One of two things would happen. Either you get run over by fast modern decks, which eh, that's going to happen. Or if you actually get like two or three demons on the battlefield, since they're mostly like massive flying creatures, you just win the game with a couple of attacks. So it's really hard to end up with four literal demons and not have already won the game. Uh, so that was problem with take number one. Take number two, I went into uh, green black for demons and basically tried to take advantage of big delve demons like Tombstalker. There's a couple of other ones, Soul Flayer. And the idea was, even though demons are normally really expensive, if we could delve them for just a couple mana, fill our graveyard with like Seder Wayfinder, maybe that would be a way we could get around the expensive demon problem. Uh, that suffered from kind of the same problem as the Rakdos one, where if we actually have like a few Tombstalkers on the battlefield, we just win the game with big flyers. And it also made it so if our opponent played like a ley line of the void, we just have all these eight mana things in hand and never do anything. Then take number three was forgetting demons altogether and going for demons in the form of shapeshifters. So shapeshifters, you can actually just curve out like one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana, get four demons on the battlefield, play Liliana's contract, win the game. While that did fix the problem of our creatures being so good that we'd win before Liliana's contract would trigger, it created another problem, which is shapeshifters are all like 1-1. One, one. So our opponent has any sort of removal, any sort of disruption. Uh, the plan wouldn't work, and there's no real backup plan. Like, if your opponent can kill a couple shapeshifters, you're left just playing like 1-1s one, for 2, and 1-1s one, for 3, or 2-2s two, for 3, and you can't really win the game. So eventually, I gave in and decided we were going to cheat a little bit and try to turn non-demons into demons with the help of conspiracy. So conspiracy, basically Basically, five mana, it just turns all of our creatures into a creature of the chosen type. So if we get down Liliana's contract, draws us a bunch of cards, whatever creatures we hit, if we have conspiracy out, gonna be demons. So any four different creatures on the battlefield on our upkeep will win the game. And the other sweet part of this plan is because these are both black enchantments that just sit on the battlefield, it kind of naturally gives us the ability to play like a black devotion style shell. Nick those to make lots of mana, to play lots of things in the same turn, to get enough demons to hopefully win the game on our upkeep with Liliana's contract. Uh, uh, so that is basically the plan of the deck. The other trick of this is basically varying our creatures. So because Liliana's contract needs four demons with different names, rather than playing like four gifted etherborns, let's say, we have a whole bunch of different double black two drops. We have gifted etherborn. We have one gatekeeper of Malakir. We have one Kiku Knight's Flower, all removal centric two drops. Then we have like Relentless Dead, kind of generates card advantage, comes back from the graveyard. Withered Wretch gives us ability to fight graveyard decks main deck. Nantucko Shade. So rather than playing like four copies of the best black double two drop, 
we play a bunch of copies, one of copies, of semi-good two drops. So that means if we can get four creatures on the battlefield, odds are they're all going to have different names and we can win with Liliana's contract. The same is two in the three drop slot where we have Giralf's Messenger, two copies, because it's pretty good. We have Garza's Assassin, which I'm actually pretty impressed by. Sack it to destroy a creature that it can come back when a creature dies if we pay a bunch of life. Kuen Ogre said it is a triple back three drop that flips around into a grave pact, essentially, where at the beginning of each upkeep, people have to sacrifice things, but it does just sit on the battlefield. A Night Veil Spectre. So again, a variety of threats to try to make sure we get four creatures with different names. And the four drop slot, we got three Phyrexian Obliterators because it's absurd and it has quadruple black mana, which is really nice for our Nykthos plan. Creekwood Liege, really sweet with Liliana's contract because it is going to be a demon named Creekwood Liege once we have Conspiracy out. And it's going to make a 1-1 one, one black worm, which is named Worm, which will also be a demon if we have Conspiracy out. So it's basically two demons for the price of one. And then Yagmoth, just another way to vary our deck, more card draw. And then we have Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which is not how we're trying to win the game. But one of the other problems you run into with Liliana's contract is the four life can be really brutal. We have some games where we really want to play contract, but we go so low on life that maybe we die to a lightning bolt. Or maybe we're so low on life we'll literally kill ourselves if we cast a Liliana's contract. Grey Merchant gains us back life so we have enough life that we can keep playing your Liliana's contracts and hopefully get the four demons to win the game. Otherwise, Liliana the Last Hope adds black mana symbols and gets back our demons from the graveyard, which is nice if stuff dies. If we're one demon short, Liliana can make sure we get there. Phyrexian Arena, black mana symbols plus a way to draw more demons. Otherwise, Fatal Push gives us a bit of removal. Collector Brutality kind of does a little bit of everything. More life gain to help with our Liliana's contract. Mana base wise, a few fetch lands primarily to trigger revolt on fatal push kill bigger creatures bunch of snow covered swamps for our dead of winter in the sideboard urborg to turn our fetch lands and our nykthos into black lands nykthos we talked about it it's our main mana producing engine to flood the board with stuff and hopefully get enough demons to win the game as far as the sideboard leyline of the void to jank out graveyard deck surgical for graveyards and combos chalice of the void Another jank out card. Uh, some matchups, it is just really devastating. It buys us a ton of time. Fulminator to help against Tron and against Control. Damp Big Sphere, a little bit awkward because it does shut down our Nykthos, but it's a necessary evil to fight against. Combo decks also helps against Tron decks. Dead of Winter with all of our snow covered swamps in the mana base, really, really good. And that is Liliana's contract for Boddard. And that's our against the odds deck for this week. Anyway, let's jump into the gameplay, see if we can actually get four demons on the battlefield with Liliana's contract, pick up the win. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it and I will talk to you soon. All right, against the odds time, we are trying to triumph with Liliana's contract. <laughs> Playing some demons, quote unquote, in modern. <laughs> oh, this deck. We have conspiracy. We got contract. That's a combo. So we just need creatures and life. Uh, well, the ability to live long enough to play our stuff. Not a fast hand, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, we will snow covered swamp. You uh, opponent. What are you up to, opponent? What are you up to? Concealed courtyard and passes. Well, snow covered swamp. You. Uh, opponent. Another concealed courtyard. Oh my god. Opponent's name is Sir Vamp, and they are literally playing vampires. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, well, we will... Let's kick this gatekeeper. Kick a gatekeeper. We also have vampires. <laughs> Take that, Sir Vamp. <laughs> I wonder if our opponent created their account specifically to play vampires in modern. It doesn't seem impossible. Alright, well... Vampire 1, down. And we're working towards contract to draw cards, and we got the conspiracy. Like, maybe there's a world where this works. Mutavolt for our opponent. Captivating Vampire. Well, we're going to have to make sure that does not go off. Stealing our stuff is bad. Well, draw some messenger. Drain our opponent. Polluted Delta. Combat. Yeah, we're going to attack. Opponent down to 16. I'm very afraid of this Captivating Vampire. Very, very afraid. If our opponent gets... They have Mutavol. I mean, they still need a lot of vampires, but if they get to the point where that's stealing our stuff, we are... We're in bad shape. We would like to draw a Fatal Push to kill that before that happens. Schwamp for our opponent. And... Oh, boy. Old Naki with a Soren on top. All right. Opponent flies in. 
Well, Craig polluted Delta. Yeah, this isn't, isn't actually feeling good now. I think we're in trouble. Down to 15. Opponent passes. More lands. Holy lands. All right. Down to 14. We might literally be dead. Uh, Liliana's contract. I mean, Vampire Nocturnus is insane when it sits on the battlefield. Contract. Down to 10. Which means we are dead if our opponent has a black card on top of their deck. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, Nocturnus is so good. We draw. Ew. Not much that's helpful. Well, let's see if there's a black card on top. Moment of truth. Sora, draw. It's a black card. Okay. Well, Sir Vamp, living up to his name. <laughs> uh, okay, opponent's playing vampires, which means we get two dead of winners, and that's that's basically all. We can go down Garza Assassin, which only kills non-black creatures, and our opponent playing black creatures, and go down, hmm, one more of something. I guess one Giralf's Messenger, and try it like that. All right, we get to play first. Oh, goodness. All right, we're, we're going to keep this. We can't pass up a hand with this much removal. We need to draw land, but... If we draw lands, this goes well, and we get to kill vampires. It is a really risky keep, but we are a 24 land deck, and removal is helpful. Vampire Lacerator. Come on, land. Come on, land. Give us a land. All right, that's not a land. That's a gifted Aetherborn. Well, we will pass the turn. Ugh, the risk might not be paying off. Boat it. Has a land. Combat. Getting in. Hitting us. Yup. Down 18. Lacerator. Indulge in Aristocrat. Well, we gotta do this now. Crack this. Snow Covered Swamp. Fatal Push. Indulge in Aristocrat. And land. Alright, that's a land. So now we get to Collective Brutality. Hmm. Do we? We could Gifted Aetherborn. Yeah, let's Gifted Aetherborn. Pass the turn. Three mana is where the Lords start coming down. So being able to get a Lord would be nice. Opponent. Getting drained. Down to 16. And. Stromkirk Condemned. Discards Bloodgast. Combat. Attacks. Well, ugh. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually bad, because now we can't kill the Stromkirk Condemned. These Brutalities looking a lot worse. Land to get back the Bloodgast. Uh-oh. This is not good at all. Opponent passes. We draw Nykthos. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Phyrexian Arena. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Stromkirk Condemned. Very bad news. Shutting off basically all of our removal spells in hand. Well, I guess if you got to play against vampires, you don't want to play against their vamp. Today we learned, opponent, Soren, the best of the vampires, grows the condemned, attacks. We are down to nine. Extra card. Ugh. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that just does it. <laughs> well, maybe we shouldn't have kept the one lander. Who would have guessed that that would go wrong? All right, against the odds time, we are looking to Liliana's contract some fools in modern. Um, This hand, I think we mulligan it. Five lands is just too many. Okay, this is actually kind of better. We can put a land to the bottom. Uh, Probably just polluted delta. And we got a fine curve. Wins up to you for our opponent. Passes. Polluted Delta. You. Opponent cracks. Gets a... Hopefully you get to go off with this Fraxine Arena. That would be sweet. Snow-covered forest. Undeps. Flooded strand. Cracks it. This might be Soul Herder. Definitely Soul Herder. Well, crack Polluted Delta. Grab a snow-covered swamp. Opponent, Coiling Oracle, gets a Noble High Arc, and passes. Now, Snow Covered Swamp, Gifted Aetherborn. Go. Flooded Strand for our opponent, Noble High Arc, and passes. Well, go to combat. Get in with our Aetherborn. Wow, opponent's gonna block? Oh, block and blink. All right. Yup, that is allowed. Well, here comes the value. Ephemerate, blinks, opponent hits a wall of blossoms. A play snow covered swamp. Phyrexian Arena. Get our value flowing. Pass the turn. Although I'm assuming our opponent should have like one Knight of Autumn in their deck that they'll hit eventually, which is sad. 
Blinks the Oracle. Hits Birds of Paradise. Coiling Oracle. Just keeps coming. Hits Ice Fang Codal. Snow Covered Forest. Aw, oh, don't kill. Don't kill our arena. We need... We need our card draw. Opponent. Passing. All right, we get an extra card. Lose a life. Liliana's interesting. I'm gonna play Urborg. Play Liliana. Liliana, take up a Noble High Arc. Opponent runs out the Codal. Yup. Well, we will pass the turn. Liliana is kind of a sniper on this board. Path to Exile. Okay. Grab a Snow-Covered Swamp. A Wall of Blossoms. Draw a card. Snow-Covered Island. Opponent goes to combat. Gets in at Liliana. And down to one. And Soul Herder. All right, let's see what our opponent targets. All right, Fatal Push, Coiling Oracle. Fizzle Soul Herder. Draw an extra card. Liliana, kill Soul Herder. Nantucko Shade. Relentless Dead. Bloodstain Mire. Collective Brutality. Two modes. Kill Duress. Discard the land. All right, take the path. And our opponent just has a Birds of Paradise. And we have a Liliana. Okay. And we have a, a Phyrexian Arena. Opponent needs a top deck now. For all of our opponent's card draw, they basically run out of action. Opponent. Reflector Mage. Yep. That's fine. That's not the end of the world. Opponent bounces. Gets in with Coiling Oracle. We're actually just going to trade. Yep. Kill it. Land. Birds of Paradise. Well, upkeep, we are going to thin our deck. Get a snow-covered swamp. Draw Liliana's contract and collective brutality. Well, play contract. Draw some cards. Down to 11. Liliana. Take up on Reflector Mage. Pass the turn. And we might be in decent shape now. Opponent cracks. Zero cards in hand. Liliana's still sitting out. And now we have a handful of stuff. Opponent. Needs like an eternal witness. Opponent passing. Opponent passing. Okay, we draw an extra card down to 10. Another fatal push. Normal card. Conspiracy. Hmm. Man, we could use a Nykthos. Well, let's... Hmm. Let's kill the birds of paradise. Play... Actually, let's play assassin. Relentless dead. Pass the turret. Opponent untaps. Draws. We have the conspiracy. We might be doing it. We might actually be getting a conspiracy kill. If we draw Nick, though, so we can get to the conspiracy kill super quick. Oh, man. Contract killing? Is it going to happen? Are we actually going to do it? <laughs> it might be happening. After the close calls, it might be it. Opponent gets in at Liliana. Sh sure. And. Ooh, Eternal Witness. That is a good one. To get back Ephemerate. Yup. Plays a land. Passes. Well, Fraxian Arena. Nykthos. New. No. Another contract. So, let's play Yagmoth. There's the Ephemerate. So we sack this to kill Eternal Witness. Fizzle Ephemerate. Get a Yagmoth. Take up Liliana on Reflector Mage. Menace in with Relentless Dead. And pass the turn. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. It still could happen. Fold it. Cracks. Breeding pool. Tapped. Untap draws. Oh, give us a Nykthos. Give us a Nykthos. Oh, no! Wow. All right. Well, we weren't going to draw Nykthos for a while. I mean, we got the win. <laughs> that is not exactly how we're planning on doing it, but a win is a win. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, we will bring in Surgical and Dead of Winter. Oh, I think we would have actually got the contract killing that game. I think we would have. If we had, if we had managed to, if we had managed to, uh, not have our opponent scoop, I think that would have ended with Liliana's contract kill. We had all the pieces. That's been probably the hardest part of the contract killing is... It's really hard to get the game in a position where where your opponent doesn't somehow concede. I think, I mean, maybe that's the challenge of Liliana's contract. It is, it is pretty win more. When I was working on this deck and playing the straight-up demon builds, like Rakdos Demons, Salt Eye Demons, 
Uh, one of the things I realized there is it's really, really hard to play... <laughs> To have four actual demons on the battlefield, because they're all like six, six flying tramplers. It's really hard to have like four real demons on the battlefield and not have your opponent uh, just concede the game. <laughs> Temple Garden for our opponent tapped. Passes. Bloodstained Mire. Go. Uh, this hand looks fine. I like Withered Ratch a bit, and Liliana was great last game. Opponent. Cracks one sub teeth. And we have our Nykthos this time. Breeding Pool. Untapped. And there is Coily into a bird. So, well, crack bloodstain mire. Snow covered swamp. Untap. Play a land. Play gifted etherborn. Pass the turn. Snow covered planes for our opponent. Birds of paradise. And passing. All right. Ooh, assassin. Well, go to combat. Get in with gifted etherborn. Opponent paths. Well, that gets a land out of our deck. Hmm. They could have ephemerate. Yeah, let's play Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. Snow Covered Swamp. Assassin. Pass the turn. I've been kind of impressed with Assassin, honestly. Uh, opponent. Passing. Well, play Relentless Dead. Nykthos. Add some mana. Collective Brutality. Two modes. Duress. Kill. Duress you. Kill Birds of Paradise. Discard the land. Ooh, Collected Company. All right, that is a good one. What does our opponent hit with the Coco? Eternal Witness to get back Collected Company and Noble High Arc. Okay. Well, I guess they can't get back Collected Company or we just duress it. So that could have went worse. Opponent's going to get back the land. So Birds dies. Opponent has two Time Warps in hand. I'll take a Time Warp. Play Liliana. Kill Eternal Witness. And pass the turn. All right, so our opponent gets an extra turn if they want it. But that turn doesn't do too much. And then this Withered Wretch can get rid of the Time Warps at some point. Opponent, getting in. Um, hmm. All right, sure. Liliana, down to two. Opponent cracks. Gets a land. Time Warps. All right. Yup. Untaps. Combat. Yup. Well... Now, I guess we will trade. Ugh. At least we got the time war uh, warp out of our opponent's hand. Block with Relentless dead. Opponent runs out of Ice Fang Codal. We lose Relentless dead. No mana to get it back. Yup. Flooded Strand. Birds of Paradise. Passes. We draw Shade. So we will Liliana kill Codal. Play Withered Wretch. Um, do we get in? No, nah, let's not. Let's just pass. Opponent cracks flooded strand. Snow covered island. Untaps. Two cards in hand. Catacombs. Combat. Gets in. Liliana. To two. Well, let's make some mana and start the eating. Uh, exile time warp. Get rid of the infinite turn combo. Exile time warp two. Exile collected company. Exile eternal witness. Exile, Path to Exile, Exile, eh, Coiling Oracle, Untap, Liliana on Noble Hierarch. Ooh, opponent cracks, okay. Sure. Dies. Well, play Nantucko Shade. Go to combat. Yeah, get in. Opponent paths, all right. Well, kill Birds of Paradise. We could use Liliana's contract. We're at 18. We have the life. Yeah, this assassin's been really sweet. Opponent. Opponent, opponent. Yup. Well, we passed the turn. See what our opponent can find. We got the graveyard very covered. And got the GG's. Well, no contract killing, but a pretty good performance with our <laughs> with our demons, quote unquote. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are trying desperately to get the contract killing. Liliana's contract demons, quote unquote. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We'll keep this. We do need land number three, but snow covered forest a or forest ancient stirring. So are we getting Trond? Uh, I guess it could be hardened scales. It's Tron. Well, Tron's gonna be rough in game one. After sideboarding, we have a reasonable number of hate cards. 
We do draw land. So, Snow Covered Swamp, you. Yeah, after a sideburn, we get Fulminators and Damping Spheres, which should help. Power Plant. Ugh. Opponent's gonna have turn four trod. <laughs> and our deck is looking a smidge fair without any immediate Tron defense. Snow Covered Swamp, you. <laughs> Next turn, we play a three drop, and then our opponent counters by playing Ulamog, or Ugin. <laughs> uh, opponent. Tower, map, and passes. Now, Blue to Delta, crack it. Snow Covered Swamp, boom. Giralf's Messenger, look out, Tron. Can you beat a 3 2? <laughs> what do you say? What do you say, Trod? Can you beat a 3 2? Found it. Now to 18. Look out. Look out, Trod. We're coming. We're coming for ya. Opponent cracks the map. Gets a. Urza's Mine. Untaps. Urza's Mine. Ugin. And we scoop it up. <laughs> okay. Well, now we get to bring in sideboard cards. Three Dab Big Spheres, two Fulminators, one Surgical. Going down most of the Fatal Pushes, both of the Collective Brutalities. Uh, one Liliana, and one... Hmm. Yeah, I guess one Giralf's Messenger. And try it like that. So we do have... We want to leave a couple Fatal Pushes for, like, Walking Ballista. We don't want to get janked out by that. Ooh, surgical and nothing. Yeah, we got a mulligan. Okay, well, we'll keep this. We will put, I guess, Withered Wretch to the bottom. Damping Sphere does make our Nykthos worse. Opponent, bringing in Leyline that doesn't actually do anything, so we're kind of okay with that. Well, this hand is basically just Damping Sphere. So we're trusting that just Damping Sphere is going to keep us alive. Power Plant, Relic. Opponent's got all the graveyard hate. We're not really a graveyard deck. I mean, I guess our opponent saw... Our opponent saw Giralf's Messenger and assumed we were some sort of, like, graveyardy zombie deck. But we're demons! Uh, quote, unquote, demons. <laughs> uh, so our opponent got him. We got him! Already getting demon points against Tron. Forest for our opponent. Sylvan scrying. It's a tower. We'd love to draw Fulminator. That would be our sweetest draw. Opponent passes. That's Fulminator. Well, play Fulminator Mage. That was a good draw. Go to combat. Get in with Kiku, the Knight's Flower. Opponent, 19. And now we actually just want to draw land. If we draw land, we get to play Lily on his contract before we sack this Fulminator. And that would be awesome. And we can hold off on the Damping Sphere for now. Opponent, Oblivion Stone. So that'll be a problem in the future. Ooh, come on, land for contract. Come on, land for contract. Ooh, disappointing. Disappointing. Another five drop. Well, go to combat. Do some attacking. Hit our opponent. Hmm. Well, play Damping Sphere. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, if we could have gotten out contract and drawn cards, life would be so much better. Opponent untaps. Now we've shut off our Nykthos anyway, so we're actually a long way away from from casting our hand. Opponent does have Tron. Ancient Stirrings. And our opponent's gonna blow up the board eventually. Another tower. And Chromatic Star. Opponent passing. Well, there's our land. Oh, we wanna do last turn. Go to combat, attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 13 past the turn. Opponent. Tower number two. Cracks a star. Huh. This means our opponent's not going to Oblivion Stone this turn. Draws a card. I mean, I guess unless they do a main phase. Wow, they are going to do a main phase. All right, well, we will blow up Power Plant. Board goes away. A uh, Surgical? Let's get a Surgical. Or Land Contract Surgical. Opponent passes. We draw Dreadshade. Hmm, all right. Okay. Yes, this went a little awkwardly. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Oh, Tron again. All right. Well, we fought the good fight. We tried hard. Got Oblivion stoned. Opponent assembled Tron through Fulminator. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a bit rough. We drew the sideboard cards. They just were not enough. Okay, Worm Coil. That is less deadly than one of the Planeswalkers. Relic and Dismembers. Opponent, passing. Exiles, Treadshade. Uh-huh. 
Oh, man. We needed... We drew our lands in the awkward timing. Twice. We drew our lands one turn later than we... Than we needed them. If we could have got this contract down off the Nykthos, things would have went much better. Now our opponent's got Tron. I guess we're just hoping they don't have a better than Worm Coil finisher. Worm Coil's kind of annoying because it's going to mean Grey Merchant isn't super close to winning. Bonet. Alania got Tron deck. Cracks a relic, draws a card. Another tower. Opponent. Combat. Getting in. Hitting us. Sure. Down to 10. Passes. We draw Polluted Delta. All right, so play Polluted Delta. Play, hmm, play Relentless Dead. Play Fulminator Mage. Blow up the power plant again. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. So opponents back off Tron, but they have a Worm Coil. Chromatic Sphere. Cracks it. <laughs> oh, we could just not keep our opponent off Tron. Opponent, combat. Gets in with Worm Coil. Well, we will block with Relentless Dead. It dies. We get to return it to hand. Yup, opponent passes. Well, play Gifted Aetherborn. Play Relentless Dead. Play Second Urborg. Add some mana. Gray Merchant. Go up to 18, pwn it down to 13, pass the turn. We have the conspiracy in hand, and we got a lot of mana, but our opponent just keeps reassembling Tron. And if they have, like, an Ulamog, an Ugin, it just, like, ends the game. Wow, Damping Sphere, two Fulminators, and our opponent just... Eh, I mean, I guess that's what Tron does. They keep assembling Tron again and again. Chromatic Star. Tron, crack Star. Do they draw a Finisher? I mean, there's a world where our opponent doesn't hit a finisher, and we get to draw a creature here, conspiracy, have enough demons, and win the game. Like, there's a there's a chance if our opponent doesn't draw. Opponent passes. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, we needed a creature. Conspiracy. Oh, so close. On demon. Snow-covered swamp. Oh, one creature short. <laughs> Pass the turn. Oh, I thought we were going to do it. Phone it attempts. Whiff, 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 whiff. Pony gets in. Oh, that's a bad sign. Okay. Yep. We will take it. Down to 12. Worm coil. Okay. Well, crack polluted delta. Thin our deck. Snow covered swamp. Come on, deck. Really? Okay. Um, conspiracy number two? Oh, wow. That was the closest. All right. Pass the turn. Oh, our deck is taunting us. We were so close. Opponent untaps with a million worm coil engines. Oh, Ugin. And we scoop it up. Oh, Wow! Oh, where's our... Oh! Ah! Oh, well, I guess we weren't going to draw anything for ten turns. Oh, so close to taking down Tron with Contract. Oh, oh, that was a painful one because we were so close. Huh. All right. Against the odds time, we are playing some Mono Black <laughs> Demon, quote-unquote, Devotion. And, well, okay... That's more lands than we want, but we got a removal spell, and we got a contract. All of our deck is cheaper than this, so we should be able to... We should be able to draw some earlier stuff. See what our opponent's doing. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. And new blizz of High Arcs. Well, we draw Grey Merchant. That's not actually cheaper. Oh, well, Bloodstained Mare. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Snow Covered Swamp. Thin in the deck Crim Style. Kill the Noble High Arc. Opponent. Noble Hire Part 2, and a Stomping Grounds. Yup. Well, come on, something we can cast. Eh, Polluted Delta go. Draw Smuster we can cast next turn. That's kind of something. Uh, opponent. Misty Rainforest. And Gaddick Teague. Well, that actually shuts down our contract, annoyingly. Well, Crack Polluted Delta. Snow Covered Swamp. Untap. 
and run out our Dross Messenger. Pass the turn. Fatal Push isn't bad. It does let us kill Gaddock Teague eventually. Uh, opponent. We are going to need a Conspiracy to demonize Flooded Strand. Opponent cracks it. Snow Covered Plains. And Eladrami's Call for Scavenging Ooze. All right. Cracks Misty. Ooze doesn't do much yet. Plays the Ooze. I guess it can eventually stop our Dross Messenger. Opponent gets in. Ooh, does not get in. Opponent passes. Well, let's play <laughs> Kuan, Ogre Ascendant. Nykthos would be sweet here. <laughs> Opponent's reading Kuan because no one's ever played it before. <laughs> Ooh, Kamigawa coming through. Um, Play Polluter Delta. Pass the turn. No attacks. Opponent eats a Fatal Push. Sure. Ooh, Windswept Teeth. Goes to combat. No attacks. Um, huh. Do we want to kill Gaddick Teague? I guess we don't have to yet. Um, yeah, let's just untap. Snow Covered Swamp. Crack Polluted Delta. Get a Snow Covered Swamp. Go to combat. Attack with Dross Messenger. Opponent blocks. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's... Fatal Push the Ooze. We actually want three creatures to die, so we can flip this Kuan. So we're giving up our ooze to make it happen. Uh-oh. Snow-covered forest. Oh, I see. It's the old... The old Expel Gaddick Teague build. Now, now, I, now I get it. Opponent. Courting out Eternal Witness to get back Eladrami's call. So we kill the ooze. We lose our Dralf's Messenger. When we go to our end step, we transform Kuan. And pass the turn. Opponent, gotta start the sacking. Yeah, I was not expecting the old Court of Calling Gaddick Teague trick. Eladrami's call. I assume our opponent's looking for an answer to Kuan. Just gets another Eternal Witness. Alright. Sacks the Noble Hierarch. Goes to combat. Gets in with Eternal Witness. Hits us. Down to 15. Opponent. Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Eternal Witness gets back Eladrami's call and passes. We draw. We don't have anything to sacrifice. Well, let's only on his contract. Draw some cards. Drop to 11. Play Snow Covered Swamp. Pass the turn. Eh, those are not the greatest of draws. Opponent. Eladrami's call. Part 20 feels like. Gets Night of Autumn. Eh, that's okay. So that's going to blow up our Kuin, I assume, but we got some action now. We haven't hit a Nykthos yet either. Opponent, combat. Gets it. Hits us. Yeah. Down to nine. There's the Knight of Autumn. <laughs> Blows up our Kuin. Yeah. 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 And passes. Well, we untap. We draw a Gifted Aetherborn. Well, play Gifted Aetherborn. Play Withered Wretch. Pass the turn. Start eating stuff from the graveyard. Flooded Strand for our opponent. Combat passes. Well, eat Eternal Witness. Eat Court of Calling. <laughs> All right, opponent has Resto, Blinks, etc., etc. Gets back Court of Calling. All right, opponent. All right, all right. Court of Calling returns. We draw. Ooh, Nykthos. All right, play Nykthos. Play Nantucko Shade. Add mana with Nykthos. Hmm. Collective Brutality 2 mode. Kill. Actually. Yeah, let's go 2 mode. Duress and Drain. Discard Frexian Arena. This makes sure our opponent can't just get Kiki Jiki and win. Opponent cracks. Down to 11. Snow Covered Island. Runs out the Court of Calling. X3. Reflector Mage. Bounces Withered Wretch. Resto in hand. Opponent goes to 9. Well, play Grey Merchant. Put our opponent to 1. Go to combat. Get in with Gifted Aetherborn. Wow. I think we're going to end up losing. Opponent blocks. Reflector Mage dies. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If our opponent draws a land, we lose. I guess it has to be a land that comes into play untapped and doesn't cost life. Then they could Resto, Blink... Wait, I think we lose anyway. 
Resto, blink eternal witness, get cord of calling, get kiki jiki. Yeah, I think we're just dead. Wow. All right. Well, that was close. Yeah, opponent's thinking this over. I'm not really sure why. It looks like the old Gaddic T cast a million quarter calling plan might work. Wow, opponent not killing us. Okay. Well, I'm relatively happy with that. Opponent passes. Play Withered Wretch. There's Resto. Blinks Eternal Witness. Gets back Court of Calling. Well, add Nykthos mana. Liliana's Contract, Part 2. Draw some cards. Bloodstained Mire. Relentless Debt. Grey Merchant. And Liliana's Contract didn't come through in the traditional way, but it did come through. Huh! Okay. Uh, we'll take it, we'll take it. Bring in the two Dead of Winners. Oh, man. I'm almost tempted to bring in Leyline. I don't think we actually want to bring in Leyline, but it's somewhat tempting. Uh, let's bring in the two Dead of Winners. Go down. One Gifted Aetherborn. One Giralf's Messenger. Run it like that. All right, well, we drew eight cards with Liliana's Contract, and we did find the Conspiracy at the end, but I still think our opponent could have killed us there. Maybe they don't have Kiki Diki in their deck. I don't know why you would not have one Kiki Jiki if you're playing Resto and four colors and all that stuff, but but maybe they don't. Well, we got a plan. Keep our opponent off their combo if they have it, and eventually make some demons. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, this is not a swift hand, but we got a contract. We sort of have a curve. Snow-covered forest for our opponent. Birds of Paradise. Dead of Winter's Sweet. Snow-covered swamp. Goo. Uh, opponent, Noble High Arc. Getting in, hitting us. Yeah. Down to 19. Stopping rounds, tapped. Well, polluted Delta Goo. Maybe we could just Dead of Winter first and then go from there. Opponent untaps. Misty Rainforest. Gets it. Hits us. Down to 18. And passes. Hmm. Well, crack this. Snow Covered Swamp. Untap. Yeah, let's do it. Snow Covered Swamp, Dead of Winter. Floats mana. Loses the dorks. Cracks. Snow-Covered Island. And there's Resto. Yup. Uh, opponent, combat. Gets in with Resto. Hits us down to... 14. Flooded Strand. Well, let's kick a... Gatekeeper. Target our opponent. Ugh, Ice Fang Godal. All right. Play Polluted Delta. Pass the turn. Yeah, now I'm not feeling great about where we're at. We've killed a lot of things, but our opponent's still got this resto, which means I could still just win any moment. Opponent combat. Get in. Hitting us. Yup. Down to 11. Cracks. Flooded Strand. Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Giver of Runes. And passes. Oh, boy. Crack Polluted Delta. Snow Covered Swamp. Bloodstained Mire. Crack it. Snow Covered Swamp. Liliana's Contract. Draw some cards, drop to five. Ugh, oh, lands. Oh, that's the, that is the worst. Oh boy, that is, that is almost precisely what we needed to not draw. There's a lightning bolt and we're dead. Well, okay. Uh, run it back. Yeah, opponent had the right answers on that one. We even had the dead a winner, but it wasn't quite deadly enough or wintery enough or whatever. Opponent, back to the sideboard plan. All right. We are on the play. All right. I mean, we're going to keep this. These Lilianas could be very good if we draw land number three in time. Land go. Snow-covered forest. Opponent. Noble hierarch. Yeah, that's what we'd like to kill with this Liliana. Land. All right, that's a land. Bloodstained mire. Crack bloodstained mire. Snow-covered swamp and gifted etherborn. Pass the turn. Opponent. Birds of paradise. Grove of the burn willows. And scavenging use. Opponent. Passing. Now well, play Bloodstained Mire. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Snow Covered Swamp. Liliana. Kill the Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we will block. Trade with the ooze. Hollowed Fountain. Untapped. Opponent passes. Alright, well, take up on Noble High Arc. Ugh, opponent has Resto. Yeah, that's bad. Hmm. Well, play Kuhn. Play Nykthos. Pass the turn. Resto's a blowout and a half. Opponent, combat. Gets in at Liliana. Down to one. We kind of would like a land here, so we could Relentless Dead into Nykthos activation. Windswept Teeth. Opponent cracks Windswept Teeth. Snow-covered forest. 
Glenelander Archmage. Opponent, Pison. Well, kill Noble High Arc. Nykthos. Play Dreadshade. Play Relentless Dead. Get in with Kuin. Opponent, down to 15. This Glenelander Archmage is somewhat annoying. Opponent, undeps. So we're going to lose the Liliana. Opponent, combat. Gets in, kills Liliana. Yeah. And scavenging use. Stomping grounds. Untapped. Opponent passes. Well, make Nykthos mana. Liliana's contract. Draw some cards. Play Bloodstained Mire. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Snow Covered Swamp. Fatal Push Resto. Obliterator. And pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Gonna start eating stuff. This Obliterator is gonna keep the ooze in check, though. Opponent can't just, like, attack into it, or they're gonna sack their board. Opponent untaps. Combat. Passes. Well, let's see what we draw. Another Nykthos. Hmm. No, make Nykthos mana. Play Liliana the Last Hope. Opponent's Exarch Mage to counter. Yup. Well, we'll play another Obliterator. Do some pumping. Nykthos, number two. Go to combat. Do some attacking. I mean, they gotta do something with this Dreadshade, or it's lethal and a half. Opponent takes it. Giving up? Oh, not giving up. Court of Calling. Wow, opponent had it. Staying alive, staying alive, unfortunately. Reflector Mage, gonna bounce the Dreadshade. All right. Oh, I thought we had him. Well, pass the turn. I guess the good news is our opponent still has two obliterators they gotta deal with, and they're down to one card in hand. And they use their Reflector Mage. Uh, opponent. Tireless Tracker. Okay. And passes. Uh, play Polluted Delta. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent eats a Noble High Arc. Gonna stay alive. Opponent goes to one. Well, play Dreadshade. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. What can they draw? They're running out of things to eat. Like, these obliterators are going to keep coming. Opponent goes up to two. Untaps. And scoops it up. Whew. Well, we didn't get the demon kill, but we got the win. Huh. And Liliana's contract was an important part of it, drawing his cards. All right. All right. All right. I mean, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Against the odds time, we are playing some, uh, ooh, boy. Some Liliana's Contract Demons, quote, Devotion. And, uh, I mean, we're keeping this hand. Oh, my son of... Oh, my... Alright, the old Double Eldrazi Temple start. My my favorite start that modern decks have. Well, let's play Kiku, which actually seems kind of sweet against Eldrazi, depending on what our opponent has. Opponent. A million mana here on turn number three. What do they do with it? It's an Endbringer. All right. Well, we have Graz Garaz Assassin for that. Oh, even better. Crack Bloodstained Mire. We have a Gatekeeper of Malakir. Grab a Swamp. Kick. Gatekeeper. Okay. Okay. Coming together. Peace out, Endbringer. An opponent with so much mana. Get in with Kiku. I mean, Kiku seems insane. It just, like, snipes every Eldrazi. And we still have this assassin left over, sort of. Opponent. Five mana. Oh, it's Ballista? Oh, Reality Smash. Okay. Opponent gonna get smashy. Sure. Hits us. Down to 13. And passes. I'm gonna play Bloodstained Mire. Get in with Gatekeeper. Um, yeah, let's just... Yeah, let's do this now. Crack. Get a Snow-Covered Swamp. We can use Kiku to kill Reality Smasher. <laughs> Man, this is like the Kiku matchup. <laughs> Bone it. Five mana. Another one. Well, you kill you. We are dropping to seven. Bone gets it. Hits us. Yeah. Down to seven. Passes. He'll play Bloodstained Mire. Play Garza's Assassin. Crack. Snow Covered Swamp. Play Relentless Dead. Combat. Get in with Gatekeeper. Opponent down to 15. Pass the tur. Opponent. Combat. Well, kill you. Uh, opponent has all his dust. Hmm. All right. Yup. Sure. Down to three. Get back assassin. Well, that is the power drawn all your Eldrazi temples. Opponent passes. Uh, play Liliana. Take down Liliana. Get Kiku. Play Kiku. 
pass the turn, see if we get to remain alive. Dead to Walking Ballista, dead to Reality Smasher Part Million. Cavern on Eldrazi, Ugin, the ineffable. What's our opponent doing with it? Wow, gonna kill Kiku, okay. And passes. Uh, take up Liliana, Gray Merchant. Go up to seven, opponent down to 11. Pass the turn, see what our opponent's got next with their Ugin game plan. Oh, that all is dust. If it wasn't for that, we would have beat the double Eldrazi temple start. But that all is dust was super good for our opponent. Opponent takes up Ugin, gets a dork, cracks Mindstone, digging for something. And Thought Knots here. Hooray. Well, that's our opponent take. Oh, the, the old two mana Thought Knots here, thanks to Ugin. Oh boy. So close! So close and yet so far. Takes the Assassin, Matter Reshaper, uh, opponent's got it all, and Matter Reshaper, literally it all. Oh my goodness. And a Karn the Great Creator. Okay, well, literally, literally, literally it all. Opponent. Yeah, now we just get locked out of the game. Huh. Well, we were close. We made our opponent up there like one of. Uh, after having the most insane start their deck can have, which is... Four mana on turn two, thanks to cards that Wizards has never banned, but still allows in the format. <laughs> I'm always going to complain about Eldrazi Temple. That is for sure. Opponent. Opponent. Get your lattice. You can do it. Gets a Pithing Needle. They get to play it for free, named Liliana. Yeah, and uh, this one is over. All right, all right, all right. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you can make four mana on turn two. Lesson learned, lesson learned. Um, yeah, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. Like, we can bring in Damping Sphere, but our opponent's deck can win without having access to mana. Although it is definitely nice for our opponent's deck when they do just have uh, have access to infinite mana on turn turn two, turn three. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we'll bring it in. Fatal Push is kind of hit or miss anyway. Yeah, I mean, we might as well bring it in, even though it's not... Even though it's not game ending. Well, we were close. If our opponent did not have all his dust, or if they had not drawn Double Eldrazi Temple, I think we win that game. But wasn't meant to be. No Liliana's contract anyway, so maybe maybe we don't want to win that way. Doesn't count anyway. <laughs> uh, contract. Contract is so sweet in theory. Well, we can't keep that hand. All right. I mean, this hand I guess we will keep, although it's not because it's good. It's because we don't really have a choice. Opponent's keeping seven, <clears throat> which I assume means some sort of nut draw. Snowgovered Swamp, goo. Uh, opponent versus Power Plant. Passes. <laughs> All right, Liliana's Contract. Well, that's a namesake card. We're a lot of mana away from taking advantage of it. Oh, is this just the, the infinite luck of Eldrazi Tron? The old, oh, look, I have seven mana. I win. All right, not quite. Power plant. Uh, if we don't draw lands, this game is super over, though. <sighs> All right. Well, yeah. Maybe we should have kept the six lander. Opponent gets it and hits us. Down to 17. Yeah. Hers is mine. Thought not seer. Yeah, this one. This one's over. Takes obliterator. Would be good against him. Well, we draw land finally. Well, Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Snow Covered Swamp, Phyrexian Arena, pass the turn. If we had hit our lands earlier, we probably would be dead of wintering here to Wrath, because we were on the play, to Wrath away the board, and uh, and now we would have had a chance. <laughs> All right, another thought not seer. Yeah, I needed to not miss those land drops, apparently. Bone it, takes dead of winter. And now we die. That dead of winter would have been great, but yeah, that's two thought knots. Opponent gets in, hits us down to nine. We untap. We got to go land second dead of winter. No, oh, all right. We wouldn't hit a land anyway. Um, all right. I mean, we won't do the early scoop, but we are, I don't think there's any way we can win from here. Gift to Aetherborn go. I mean, I guess the good news is apparently we were going to miss our lands anyway, so it wouldn't have actually been relevant. Opponent, spatial contortion, and we scoop it up. Ha, 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 ha. All right. All right against the odds time we are trying to win with Liliana's contract with Liliana's quote unquote demon in modern and we're gonna keep this this is a, a few more lands than we would 
want to have. But we got stuff we can do ish. Marsh flats for our opponent. Cracks it. Snow covered plains. And Colossus Hammer. All right, it's hammer time. <laughs> Grab a snow covered swap. Pass the turn. Um, well, Bloodstained Mire. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Snow covered swamp. Dress our opponent. Oh. Okay. Well, this is not at all what I was expecting. Opponent's playing something very different. Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Core Outfitter to attach the hammer. Yeah. And now I guess we need to draw a Fatal Push, like this turn-ish. Opponent. Passing. Well, play Giraffe's Messenger. I mean, I guess we can try to chump for a while. Snow-covered planes. Although our opponent's going to start drawing cards. Sram and Flare Hus draws a card. Yep. Going to get in for 12. We take it. Down to pretty much dead. But not actually dead. Snow-covered swamp and Creekwood Leech. Pass the turn. Snow-covered planes for our opponent. Flare Hus draws a card. Basilis Scholar draws a card. Well, opponent is... What I would call swarming off here. Corduelist. Corduelist. All right. Opponents running it all out there. Combat attacks. Well, we block with Dralf's Messenger. Comes back. Drains our opponent for now. Opponent's down to one card. That is something. <clears throat> we make a dork. Play Relentless Dead. Play Bloodstained Mire. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Aired Mesa. Uh-oh. Cracks Arid Mesa. That's not a good sign that they need that mana. Snow-covered planes. Another Colossus Hammer. Yup. And we'll scoop it up. All right. Well, <laughs> that was some uh, some good sramming from our opponent. So, um, Chalice of the Voids in. Collected Brutalities out. Um, one Liliana out. And I guess a Dead of Winter in for a Messenger. And let's try it like that. Huh. Well, that was a pretty impressive draw. One thing I know about Pure Steel Paladin decks is when you draw Pure Steel Paladin, it looks good. Same goes for SRAM. Like, when you draw your namesake card and your opponent can't kill it, it seems like you're playing a whole different game. And that's pretty much what happened there. Opponent had a SRAM and uh, was able to go to town. And they had the turn two Colossus Hammer. So, all right, let's see, uh, let's see what this deck looks like in game two. Well, we are going to keep this. I'm a little sad because... We only have one land. We have one land, two chalices. Chalice on one is absurd against our opponent's deck. Chalice on one and two, and I don't think our opponent can win. All right, Polluted Delta, go. So we have to pray to the magic gods that we draw land, and this hand's good. Snow-covered planes. Opponent passing. All right, well, snow-covered planes. Crack this. Snow-covered swamp. Um, hmm. Do we chalice with this fatal push in hand is the question. Or do we wait? Let's wait. Let's play... You know what? We're going to play it. Sure. Yes, we lock our own fatal push. But we also lock a huge percentage of our opponent's deck. Snow cover planes. SRAM. So our opponent's going to be able to draw cards. And we draw another land. We'll play Kiku. Play Bloodstained Mire. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. What can you do through this chalice? They still get to draw, even if their stuff is countered. Pure Steel Paladin. Gonna draw a card. Get their hammer countered. I mean, if we draw land, we get to start just kikuing down these creatures, which would be sweet. Opponent gets and hits us. Yeah. Down to 17. We draw... Not a land. Well, let's back up Chalice. Pass the turn. Come on, lands! Opponent. Another Pure Steel. <sighs> Draws a card. Oh, we really need a land. Really, really, really. Bone it. Gonna get in. Hit us. Come on, deck. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it with this land. Down to 13. Bone it passes. All right, that's a land. So Bloodstained Buyer. Crack it. Swamp. 12. Crack it. Swamp. 11. Obliterator. And this should shut down the aggression for the time being. Snow Covered Plains. Core Outfitter. So opponent's just trying to go wide. Combat, no attacks. Now, I guess we do this now. Kill Sram, since that's the one that can draw cards even through the chalices. Opponent, another Sram. Flare Hus, counter, draw a card. Chalice has been as good as we thought. Opponent, collar, 
draws. Countered, Bowie, untap. Ooh, Nykthos. That's sweet. Now, add a bunch of mana. Six, seven, eight. Play Giralf's Messenger. Kills Rob. Pass the turn. We actually might be getting the contract killing. We have these conspiracies. We got the mana. We just need a Liliana's contract, essentially. And Kiku's been awesome with these challenges. Opponent done. Done, done, done. Well, we didn't actually get to get the contract killing because our opponent couldn't do anything and they scooped, but it did work. Uh, do we want to change anything? I don't know. Uh, this might be as good as it gets. Can we change anything? Keep it like that. Run it back. Well, Chalice was good there. We are on the draw this game, which makes it a little bit sketchier. But Chalice was basically as we hoped. And that was with our opponent drawing four of their eight pure steel and ROMs. And it still couldn't get through the Chalice. Um, okay. Well, this we will keep. Our mana's clunky, but two fatal push. Makes me happy. Makes me very happy. And we have the Nykthos too. So if we get one more Black Source, we'll be able to start devoting. And we even have this Dead of Winter. Yeah, Sand looks reasonable. Opponent, what do you got? Wait, do they keep zero lands on six? That seems like the greediest thing I've ever seen. Huh? Maybe they're just post-combating. Okay, Marsh Flats. Opponent passes. Well, polluted Delta Gill. We would like more black mana. Opponent cracks. Sacred Foundry tapped. Uh, opponent. Flare Husk. Yup. That's fine. Opponent passing. We draw. Urborg, that works. Play Urborg. Play... Kiku, pass the turn. Urborg's especially nice because it lets our Nykthos tap for black mana for like Dreadshade. And then once our Nykthos gets going, things become really sweet. Opponent combat hits us. Yeah, down to 19. And passes. Hmm. <laughs> well, go to combat. Get in with Kiku. Play Nykthos. I think we're going to pass. We've seen Lightning Bolts and I would rather run Dreadshade out in a way that we can protect it by pumping it. Protect it from Lightning Bolt. Opponent, going to Path the Jur. All right. I think we just let that go and then deal with the SRAMs and Pure Steels. Opponent, wow, doing nothing. They must want to kill this, Kiku. Um, eh, all right, let's just, let's just play Dreadshade. I was thinking about Chalice on two, but Chalice is really good in this matchup, but I don't know if we want to Chalice now with these double Fatal Pushes. Get in with Kiku. Opponent. All right. Helix says Kiku. Yup. Well, pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Sram. Uh, yeah. Let's fatal push Sram. Contract so close. I'll go to combat. Get in with Dreadshade. Hit our opponent. Oh, we need one more black source. Yeah. Let's chalice on two. Pass the turn. All right. Bolts the Dreadshade. And Flare Husk. Well, come on, land. Opponent passes. Gatekeeper. Well, kick a gatekeeper. Oh! Oh. Yeah, we put a chalice on too. <laughs> Just kidding. We will not kick a gatekeeper. Snow covered planes for our opponent. Equips Flare Husk. I really don't want to kill Flare Husk. Bacillus Collar. Yeah, I think we got to take it for now. Opponent hits us. Down to 17. We untap. Contract. All right. Pass the turn. Come on, land! We have conspiracy and contract. We just need one more land. Opponent. Bacillus collar. Well, all right. Fatal push. Colossus hammer. Yep. Opponent passes. All right. There's a land. Play Bloodstained Buyer. Liliana's contract. Draw some cards. Thank goodness. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Not great cards, but they are cards. Down to 13. We didn't hit any creatures. Snow-covered planes for our opponent. And passes. Ooh, Yagmoth. We'll play a land. Conspiracy. On Demon. <laughs> Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. And passes. All right, let's one, two, three, four. Yagmoth. Snow-covered swamp. Mana. Contract number two. Give us some demons. Ooh, all right. Getting closer. Uh, yeah, pass the turn. Discard snow-covered swamp. Oh, oh, I think we might be doing it. We can set it up for next uh, two turns. We need two turns. We need two turns and we finally pulled it off. Pulled it. Ooh. 
Gifted Etherborn 1, Creekwood Liege 2, Token 3, Yagmoth 4. Uh, opponent. Bolts are face. Down to 6. Passes. Well, Nykthos, add mana. Gifted Etherborn. Oh no! Oh my goodness. I keep forgetting about this chalice. So we don't have it yet. Ugh. I don't want to lose to Lightning Bolt. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. I don't know if we'd play the third contract. Like, enough Lightning Bolts and Lightning Helixes can kill us. Opponent. Passing. We make a token. Yes. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sack the worm. Draw Liliana. Add a bunch of mana. Play Liliana. Take down Liliana. Get back Dreadshade. Play Dreadshade. Oh, I really want to win with Contract. Do we put ourselves to Dead to Lightning Bolt? We would have to play another contract. It would put us to one. Oh, all right. We got to pass. We got to pass. Oh, so I guess I think we're going to win, but I don't think we're going to win with Iliad's contract. It's just too risky. We're going to end up one turn short and opponent scoops it up. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, that was a good performance from our deck. Uh, we had the setup. We would have made a token. And then the token would have given us four creatures. So in theory, if next turn, instead of attacking and pumping, we just passed, we would have had four demons with Liliana's contract. I mean, Chalice was kind of helpful, <laughs> but we would have got it. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. I mean, I think that's part of the problem. I don't know how often we'll actually see the trigger of Liliana's contract. I don't know how often. I think it says zero because the game ended. I was just looking at that. I don't know how often we'll see the trigger because people see it coming, but I mean, it drew us eight cards and produced a lot of mana and it would have won us the game. Imagine if our opponent had ensnaring bridge and we couldn't attack. Contract would have got there. It would have. Sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Liliana's contract in the modern format? And overall, we ended up going three and three with the deck. Six matches, one three loss, three 50%. Yeah, I mean, not bad for being a wacky brew. On the other hand, Oh, it is ridiculously hard to actually see a trigger from Liliana's contract. So uh, either we lose, that happens half the time apparently, we win without Liliana's contract actually triggering, uh, even though when we win without the Liliana's contract trigger, often the huge boost of card advantage from Liliana's contract is a key part of that. Like drawing four for five in this deck is really, really good, or our opponent in games where it looks like we might win with Ileana's contract, and we did have a few of those, our opponent's going to see it coming, and they're going to concede before we actually get to the point of seeing the trigger. Like, we have three demons, and we have the contract, and our opponent knows that they can't get out of it, so they scoop it up. I do like that this build, uh, it did get around the biggest problems of the demon build. Like, we can actually cast our stuff because our stuff is relatively cheap and Nykthos makes a lot of mana and our creatures are small enough that it is theoretically possible that we're going to have four creatures and not already be winning the game. So I do think that this was a good way to take advantage of it. I do really wish we could just like play demons, make Liliana's contract work, but boy, is it really hard to make Liliana's contract work without doing something cheaty by like turning all of our non-demons into demons with conspiracy so i'm pretty happy with how the deck ended up we got to play a lot of cool creatures creatures that normally wouldn't see play to try to get four different demons i was very impressed in some matches by gara's assassin i think that card might be a little underrated like being able to just have a three drop that adds nykthos mana that we can sack to kill something and then theoretically can get back from the graveyard even though it's a lot of life that was very powerful in some matchups i was very impressed with that one uh kuan did some funny things sometimes uh creek would lead did its stuff so i think that this deck is fairly competitive although like i said i don't know if we're ever going to see the liliana's contract actually trigger i uh, i mean there's a couple of games that i would count as liliana's contract wins where we would have won with liliana's contract had our opponent not conceded uh so i think that's about as good as it gets with liliana's contract but it was a sweet deck we got to play sweet cards liliana's contract even if it doesn't win us the game with our demons at least draws us a ton of cards, which is really powerful. That might be the sneaky aspect of Liliana's contract. And I 
think if you're going to build around Liliana's contract, I think that's what you're kind of focusing on. Liliana's contract, you use it as a source of card advantage, and then also... Sometimes you can backdoor your way into winning the game. Maybe there's an ensnaring bridge where you just can't attack and it's not going to happen. Then you play Conspiracy, you got your contract, you got your demons, you win that way. So there are matchups where it's going to be really relevant. But outside of those matchups, uh, yeah, the main issue we run into is opponents scooping before the trigger actually goes off. Once we get close, once we have Conspiracy and Contract, like two or three demons, that's when our opponents get into scoop mode uh, and just give up on ever beating it. So we don't actually get to see a trigger, but it was fun regardless. It did cool stuff regardless. Anyway, that's been our against odds for this week. Liliana's contract for Bodard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.